All right, we're out here on the uh, 2013 Camaro, and we have a check engine light. And we'll go ahead and start it up so you can see that. So we're going to troubleshoot this, see what we can find. Um, we're going to use the D8 on this. So I'm just going to hit auto scan. It is a 2013 Camaro. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and do automatic scan. And we're just going to let it scan everything. Now that's an engine light, so it's going to be an engine control module issue as far as that light. But we're going to see what other what other faults we got too. It's been a while since I've uh, actually worked on this particular vehicle. So we're just going to see what we got. And you can see how quick that went through, uh, you know, all those modules you know at that point right now it's uh trying to scan for a power steering control module this car does not have uh electric power steering so it's not going to find it but it's going to give it an attempt we have a potential of 23 modules that could be on this particular car so it's just going through every one of them and we'll see how many it finds cars running fine uh engine light came on so uh, we're just going to take a look and see see what the problem is now we have four uh, faults on the body control module my guess on that are the fog lights um, they don't work I ended up putting uh, LED bulbs in them uh, probably about a year and a half ago and they're they're gone they're shot they're bad so my guess is that that's probably what's going to be those four faults but we'll take a look at that too and we'll see uh you know see if that is indeed the case so we're on module 15 of 23 so far I've been very happy with this scan tool. Um, I highly recommend buying a 10 foot uh, cord. And I just keep it hooked up all the time. The reason is if you have to go out under the hood to say actuate, you know, a, a component or a device, you can carry the scan tool out there. Uh, that's That obviously is what's nice about a Bluetooth uh, scan tool like my Autel um, but uh, I've been trying to use this more and more just to get a feel for it and to see you know how well I like it and so far I tell you what for the money it's uh, it's it's hard to beat so we're on 18 of 23 so far just one one failure on the engine and four on the body control module I put a link to the cord that I bought. Seems to work fine. Uh, I believe the cord I bought is 10 foot, might be 12, but it's just an OBD2 extension cord, basically. Uh, as cheap as they are, you may as well you may as well have one. It it'll just make your life a lot easier. Whatever you've got to carry your tool around to whatever uh, part of the car that you need to go to. Okay, so. We got one on the telematics communication interface control module. We'll just hit uh, DTC report, and that gives you just a quick overview of what it found. So, on the engine control module, it looks like we've got uh, a PO496 EVAP system flow during non purge. Then, we got four on the body control module, which is left daytime running lamps control circuit short to battery left right right so we got left and right so uh that's what that's going to be Th those fog lights which are on during the daytime uh is what what's going to be the problem there uh now the telematics 1804 unknown dtc not sure what that is i'll have to research that that's a u1804 
and I'll have to pull that up that's a history code so it's not even a current code so let's go back over here let's go to uh, we'll go back and I'm going to hit system selection we're going to go into the engine control module this is a V6 it's automatic and we're going to see what uh, what options we have for actuation test under engine there's evap system okay so it looks like we have a pretty good selection here we got the purge solenoid valve the vent solenoid valve evap purge and seal evap test uh, we're going to go ahead and start with the purge solenoid valve and let's see what Okay, I'm going to want to see the fuel pressure sensor, fuel tank pressure sensor. So let's see, view data stream. Hopefully it's just going to let me pick. Okay, no. So, okay, let's. So here, evap malfunction history. We have an evap purge valve leak. And what I'm wanting to look for is the fuel tank pressure. Okay, right here. Fuel tank pressure sensor. Okay, so we're at a negative 0.54, 1.59 on the voltage. So I'm going to hit increase. And it does appear to be changing. If you exit out of this, it should uh, go back to its normal state. Let's take a look at that code again. I can't remember exactly what it said. EVAP system flow during non purge. So if there was flow, that could be even though even though the solenoid is does appear to be working, doesn't mean that it's working properly. Whatever it tries to close off, it may not be closing off completely. In fact, we can check that, and, and we'll do that. The first thing I want to do, let's go. We're going to get out of this. We're going to go back to uh, actuation test, and I'm going to turn the car off, leave the key on. The hoods. I've already got the hood popped. So here's where you want a long cord. Take your cord. You can come out here. You can put your scan tool out here where you where you need it. So let's go ahead and get to the purge valve. Gotta take, take this off. I'm going to rotate my tires here in a little bit. I'm going to get a little tool to pop these little inserts out. I believe the purge valve. Yeah, I think it's... Well, we could probably get to it right here. But you know what? I'm going to go ahead and get this out of the way anyway. So let me, uh, let me get a tool to do that. Okay. Got my little insert removal pliers here.
face just pops right up out of there. So the first thing I want to do is see if that feels like it's got a nice solid click. So we're just going to e-bat purge solenoid. So it does feel like it's got a nice solid click. So let me, I'm going to go ahead and disconnect this. We're going to hook vacuum to it and see if it shuts completely off and opens up. Just so you can see what I'm actually, how to take this off. If you've got to change your purge solenoid, there's one bolt and a, it's 10 millimeter and there's a uh, pneumatic line. Actually, we're going to keep the connector hooked up for now. So I'm going to grab my uh, vacuum pump. I'm just going to take this O-ring off because the tube I'm trying to push over it is trying to pinch it. Now we can pull a vacuum. I want you to watch the vacuum gauge. So right now it should be completely sealed off. Whenever it's actuating, it's definitely open, but whenever it is shut, or supposed to be shut, I should be able to pull a vacuum on that, and it should hold it. It is definitely not doing that. So, purge solenoid is bad. So let me get a new purge solenoid. We'll do the same check just to show that a new one will seal completely off and uh, we'll go from there okay got us a uh, made in Mexico uh, AC Delco purge solenoid there's the part number That's what it should look like when you get it. Comes with the O-ring, uh, the bolt. So now what we want to do is the same test. So what I'm going to I'm going to go ahead and remove this O-ring because I don't want to accidentally pinch it as I'm forcing my uh, vacuum gauge on it. Set it off to the side there. Okay, so now what we're going to do, I'm going to go ahead and disconnect this connector. Plug the connector into the new purge solenoid. Make sure we still have plenty of vacuum there. Uh, I'm going to hit increase. And there we go. Should be closed. Holds vacuum. And that's what you want whenever you, uh, whenever it's working.
Now I'm just gonna put this thing in. Okay. I'm gonna zoom in for you. So to put this in, it's just the reverse of what you did to take it out. Of course, make sure you got your O-ring on there. So I just clip the end on there till it clips on. Perks on where it's stuck in the hole. Now I've just got to tighten the bolt up. It is a shouldered bolt, so it'll stop and shank out so you can't over tighten it and there it is so we'll go ahead and exit out of this and let's see the only thing I'm going to do now let's go back and yeah, go back to engine control module clear the trouble codes Okay, so that should have took care of everything. I'm going to put the cover back on and uh, start it up, make sure the check engine light is out, and this job will be done. Okay, we're going to start it up uh, just to show that the engine light should be out. So all lights are out. Of course, I still got the hood up, uh, but need to change the oil. But everything's looking good. So, oh, just another tip. So, if you are able to troubleshoot your solenoid the way I was here, where it actually was working, it just wasn't shutting completely off like it should. I have actually taken WD-40 sprayed inside the solenoid that will kind of clean it up and make it to where it will start sealing again and if you have a vacuum pump and you pump it up and it, it does seal uh, I've actually done that and I've gotten another couple years worth of uh, life out of those solenoids before I've either had to do it again or just replace the solenoid the solenoids are pretty cheap you can get them for 20 to 40 bucks um, so you know that's another option if if you want to try that before replacing the solenoid uh, just squirt some WD-40 in it and let it actuate uh, you know so that it, it will try to help clean the inside of it up and uh, you know best case scenario that works and gets you by worst case solenoid still has to be replaced so you're not going to be out nothing you're not going to hurt nothing um, so anyway that's it you guys take care we'll see you in the next one